Hello and welcome to this edition of Tech24. I'm Rebecca Bowring. Coming up, telecoms VIPs meet in Geneva to focus on the future of the web. The UN says internet access is a human right, but who, if anyone, should control how it's run? We look at two bodies bidding for governance. And master the art of French cuisine with a touchpad made for kitchens. Cook is a Wi-Fi connected culinary coach unfazed by crumbs or spills. This, the 40th ITU Telecoms World, organised by the UN, is where internet policy is shaped for years to come. In Geneva, world leaders, ambassadors, CEOs, with their national pavilions, countries vie for investment and companies for sales. This year's hot issues are broadband access, meeting millennium development goals and a peace treaty for the web. As the internet becomes more sophisticated, questions of governance multiply. We asked the Secretary General of the ITU why the web needs regulating. Every country has a different approach in terms of uh, the ethical handling of information. While you are looking for criminal activity, you may come across information of a non-criminal nature. How do you treat that? How do you treat the privacy? your citizens. If everyone had to deal with it, it would be a chaos. Governments have a role there, but the citizens have the right to know what's going on. France24.com's editor-in-chief Eric Olanda joins me now in the studio to discuss this topic in a bit more detail. So we're hearing there, Eric, from Mr. Torre some of the reasons why world leaders believe that the internet needs to be governed, issues of privacy, issues of security. How is it working at the moment? It's really an offshoot of the founding of the internet, which was created by the U.S. Pentagon. And in the late 90s, it switched to the semi-private organization, kind of semi-government controlled, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, known as ICANN. And this is really the big dispute, is who who should govern the internet. Now, so far, ICANN uh, is the one who standardizes everything on the internet. So someone signing on in Beijing, to someone in Baltimore, to someone in, in Brighton, all get the same experience because you've got one centralized place with which the names and the numbers and the rules are made. But people are now starting to raise the question of, should the United States, and one country in particular, have that much control? And that's what we're hearing in, in Geneva today. Because ICANN's been criticized for being too close to the US administration. Exactly. And the United States really likes it that way. And that's one of the reasons why I do not foresee any change in the current system, because the United States will never agree to give up this power. The last thing that it wants to do is give it to the UN. You have to remember that in the United States, the politics of the UN are very different than they are the rest of the world. There's a lot of distrust of the UN, a lot of skepticism of the UN, and this is something a point of national pride for Americans that they invented the internet and they also want to keep control over it. No president and no Congress in this generation right now will ever give up that control. That's just my opinion. So let's talk about this UN specialized agency, the ITU. That's the body that was behind uh, this conference that we saw in Geneva. They've been criticized in the past for being too slow to react and being a little bit out of touch. Why is that? Because they're the UN. This is the UN, and I'm going to sound very American here, but the UN is an extremely bloated, inefficient, organization that is bureaucratic beyond all imagination and this is the fastest moving industry on the planet right now. So the idea that the UN is well equipped to handle this just seems ludicrous to me. Because it grew out of an organization that started up in the, at the end of the 1800s, right. is that right? In the right? 19th century is when the ITU kind of dates its origin. So it's not to say that there shouldn't be some global governance. I, you know, I don't foresee how, frankly, given the current politics. But the internet is now so strategically important to countries, particularly the major powers, that it's going to be very hard to imagine a smaller power, for example, you know, being able to encroach on the American, on the American dominance right now. It's hard to imagine. Let's talk about this new initiative that uh, ICANN is proposing starting in January 2012 because ICANN manages the domain names network on the internet, doesn't it? Um, it will uh, introduce a new host of web addresses that allow companies to buy URLs ending in their brand name, not just .com, .net. Uh, we've got a soundbite from CEO Rod Beckstrom explaining how that will work. We have a new program where we're opening up, uh, in a simple sense, we're opening up to the right of the dot. So today you think about a .com, .net, .org, or .fr. You could think tomorrow about .company name, or .city name, or .brand. Uh, we're opening up a program so that organizations can apply for new top-level domains. 
And applying for those, Eric, those TLDs, top-level domains, will cost $185,000. And big firms like Hitachi say they're interested. So obviously, it's very expensive. But how does opening up the Internet's namespace like that affect issues of web control and governance? Well, there's two main issues that are going on here. One of them is that price for admission is very, very high. And this is what a lot of developing countries say is really prohibitive about the ICANN governance, is that it biases wealthy countries. Uh, there's another part of this, too, is that right now, domain names are using only Roman characters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And there's really been a push from the likes of India, from the Arabic countries, and Chinese, and also other non-Roman script characters, think Japan, to have web addresses that don't only use A, B, C, D, E, and F. So those are the two big trends. But this top-level domain issue is one that's very, very complicated, because if you have too many top-level domains, like we've got .tv, .com, .info, .net, all of them, it gets very confusing. One of the reasons why the Internet it's been so successful is .com has been so easy for everybody to use. So now all of a sudden you're spreading this out, it's going to get more complicated. Not to say that's a bad thing, it's just going to be more complicated. But sometimes the simplest way is the best. Yeah. Thanks for that, Eric. Stay with us, Test24 next. Welcome to our gadget segment, and Eric Orlando has transformed himself into a master chef. I well, a master chef, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm testing out. I figured I'd kind of dress the part for our kitchen tablet. This is the Cook tablet, 350 euros for a tablet that just goes into the kitchen, waterproof, dustproof, spillproof. Not sure if it's kid-proof or not, but a lot it of kind functionality. Of your cookery books. It does. It's supposed to. Now right. here's the problem. It does one thing, mm. and one thing only. And for 350 euros, it seems like a lot of money to have a tablet dedicated to just doing one thing. My suggestion, get an app like this, put it onto your iPad, get a nice protective case around it that waterproofs it, and you've saved yourself 333 euros. But so it has videos, doesn't it? That it has in. videos. It's got a very nice interface, Linux uh, operating system. It's got a very, very quick tactile screen. So I love the functionality of it. I just don't want to buy another tablet. Because it's too niche. Another tablet I have to charge, another tablet I have to keep track of, and not to mention the fact that 350 euros to me just seems very high. Made by a French company, it's only in French, so Anglos have to wait. Yeah. Uh, so the operating system is really unique in this case. I like the idea, but I really think it's better as an app and not a standalone tablet. And they've just brought their operations from China back to Burgundy here in France, so it's unlikely the cost will go down anytime soon. Hard to imagine you're going to see it go down a lot. So the cook is out. The cook is out. But the uniform, what do you think? <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Uh, there we go. Your wife will love it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> thanks for being with us, Eric Olander. Many thanks as well to our uh, correspondent in Switzerland, Vicky Morgan, for her help with the program. Don't forget, you can join the conversation on our Facebook page as ever, forward slash tech24. It's there in English and in French. We leave you with a clip this week that is, well, it shows the future, we could say. A major software company's vision of what the world will look like in 2019. It's a bit like Minority Report. The woman's glasses translate foreign languages. The taxi window is an augmented reality screen. And all the technology you see here is in the process of being developed. So maybe the world could actually look like this in under a decade. We'll have to wait and see. Thanks for being with us. See you again next week on Tech24.